National Broadcasting Company presents Transcribe the Magnificent Montague, starring Monty Woolley. When Edwin the Magnificent Montague left the Shakespearean theater for the economic security of radio as Uncle Goodhart, hero of an afternoon program, life did not become beautiful. He misses the applause, the spotlight, those Shakespearean roles he reveled in. Today, his theatrical activity is limited to an occasional Shakespearean reading at his theatrical club, the Proscenium. Last night, he gave such a reading. It is morning in the Montague apartment. His wife, Lily, is just getting up. Agnes, the maid, is up and is now in her third week of spring cleaning. If they made me a king, I'd still be a slave around here. If they made me... Agnes! Oh, good morning, honey. Good morning, Agnes. Where's Edwin? I woke up this morning and he's gone. Don't ask me. A half hour ago, he come rushing out, his pants on over his pajamas, threw on his coat and ran out. Edwin rushed down to get the morning papers. What's he so anxious about? Is he afraid the Army's calling up the reserve officers from the Civil War? Civil War? (laughs) Oh, that's silly. My era. It was a revolutionary war. The Revolutionary War. Now, please, Agnes. I don't know. I've seen those pictures of the spirit of 76, and if your husband ain't the guy with a bandage on his head, I'll eat the drum he's beating. <laughs> oh, Agnes, stop joking. You know Edwin is merely in his middle age. Yeah, like I said, he's from the Middle Ages. <laughs> oh, please. For a man in his 50s, Edwin is very well preserved. Well, you should have gotten a load of him this morning. It looked like the preserves went bad. <laughs> Now, Agnes, don't annoy him this morning. You know, last night he gave his Shakespearean readings at the proscenium club. Poor Shakespeare. Why don't your husband pick on a guy who's alive and can fight back? <laughs> Agnes, it was a triumph, like old times. Edwin's voice was as strong as ever, full of fire and resonance. Oh, you should have come along. What for? I can't hear a thing with my punctured eardrums. Well, you came to hear him uh, recite last year. I know. What do you think punctured my eardrums? <laughs> Now, Agnes, your ears are perfectly all right. Oh, try and understand. Last night meant so much to Edwin. There were some critics there, too. All his old friends at the theater. He proved that he's still the magnificent Montague. That's why he rushed out so early this morning, to find out if any of the critics mentioned him. Oh, the telephone. I'll get it. Let me take it. Here. Uh, Hello, this is Mrs. Montague. Doctor Who? T. Horatio Wellington? Why, thank you, sir. He'll be very pleased how much you enjoyed him last night. Proposition for him? Well, I can't answer for him, Doctor. He's pretty busy these days. I surely try later. Ah, Agnes, it's like old times in the theater. The morning after opening night, strangers calling up to congratulate Edwin. Edwin rushing down to get the morning papers for the reviews. The whole town talking about it. The next day, the play closes. (laughs) Oh, Agnes... There's no business like show business. That was Montague's trouble. When he was in a show, there was no business. <laughs> now, now, you're speaking about Edwin Montague, the foremost Shakespearean actor of our time. So he keeps saying. <laughs> well, he'll be back any minute with the newspapers. You'd better get breakfast ready. Why bother with breakfast? If his name is mentioned, he'll eat the papers. <laughs> Agnes, he hasn't been on the stage in eight years. Giving a reading at his club may not seem very important, but it's a high spot for him. Agnes, as a favor to me, be nice to him this morning. Okay, I'll be sweet. As a favor to you. Oh, there he is. Good morning, Edwin. Good morning, Lily. Ah, it's a beautiful morning. Anything in the newspapers about your reading last night? Uh, Yes, Lily. The critics seem to still remember me. They penned a few paragraphs about my my little effort last night. <laughs> I'll bet they raved about you. Well, they did wax enthusiastic, but I guess it was just for old times' sake. Oh, nonsense. You were a triumph last night. People have been phoning. Really? Congratulations, Mr. Montague. Who said that? Well, don't be so startled. It was Agnes congratulating you. Agnes congratulating me? I don't believe it. Edwin, Agnes is trying to be nice to you. She said, congratulations. Well, she probably thinks it's a swear word. (laughs) What are you going to do? He's still a beast. All right, Agnes, get his breakfast. Hmm. I'll fix something for him. Just say the word, honey, and I'll make you a widow. (laughs) Uh, Just coffee, Agnes, black coffee. Just black. I was hoping you'd want cream this morning. It just went sour. (laughs) 
Get it, Agnes. Okay. Well, uh, then, it looks as if my deal with the mayor would go through. A deal with the mayor? Yes, on the opening day of the baseball season, instead of the first ball, he's throwing out Agnes. <laughs> Oh, Edwin, you're terrible. Agnes made an effort to be nice to you. Now, the least you could do was thank her. All right, Lily, all right. I'll be charming to her. Now, listen to what they said about me in the papers. Sit down and read them to me. Oh, Edwin, it's just as it used to be after our opening night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's John Chapman in the news. Mm. Listen. Last night at the Presidium Club, uh, the curtains of yesterday were lifted for one splendid moment when Edwin the Magnificent Montague gave an informal reading of selections from Shakespeare. Here's your coffee. Agnes, shh. Edwin's reading. Mind if I don't listen? Please, go on, Edwin. No, Lily, if it bothers Agnes, I could always take the newspaper downstairs and read it in some doorway. <laughs> Edwin, stop that. Oh, my, isn't our Mr. Huffity Huff touchy this morning? Agnes, uh, now go on, Mr. Huffity Huff. Uh, go on, Edwin. <laughs> all right, all right. It continues. For an all-too-brief moment, we were allowed to see and hear one of the all-time greats. Did you hear that, Lily? He called me one of the all-time greats. That's the same thing they said about Sea Biscuit. <laughs> all right, Agnes, roll over and play dead. <laughs> Lily, what's the use? She won't let me read. Oh, go on now. I know. Let me shove the newspaper down Agnes's throat and then read it with a fluoroscope. <laughs> Agnes, let him read. What else does Chapman say? He ends the paragraph. When Montague left the stage, a golden era came to an end. Sick Transit Gloria Mundi. Sick Transit Gloria Mundi. Translation. Rest in peace, jerk. <laughs> uh, Lily, we mustn't be selfish. Let's give Agnes to the Dodgers. They could use another bat. Oh, now, please stop. <laughs> Edwin, what do the other critics say? Oh, I'll answer the door, Agnes. Now, let me do it. That must be that cute mailman. Oh! <laughs> oh, Agnes. Gad, a man isn't safe around her anymore. You are, Grandpa. <laughs> Western Union, sign here. Okay. Say, you're a cute kid, too. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Agnes, you're irresistible. Edwin, look at all those telegrams. Let me have them, Agnes. Who are they from? Uh, here's one from Catherine Cornell. I'll read it. Uh, sorry, could not attend your performance last night, but was with you in spirit. Kit, uh huh. This is from Maurice Evans. Couldn't make it last night, but was with you in spirit. Huh? Here's one from Cedric Hardwick. Distance kept me from attending, but was with you in spirit. What were you holding last night? A seance? <laughs> Quiet. Oh. oh, here's a nice one, Lily. Listen. Our hearts overflow with happiness for you. Oh, Edwin, go on. Uh, words cannot express how proud we were of you last night on your graduation from dental school. <laughs> Aunt Minnie and Uncle Matt. Aunt Minnie and... Oh, it's a mistake. Here's another telegram. Cad, listen, Lily. Heard you last night at the Presidium Club. You were superb. Would like to talk to you about arranging nationwide tour for Shakespearean readings. Signed, Dr. T. Horatio Wellington. A nationwide tour? Lily, giving readings and lecturing on Shakespeare. Going on the road again. Oh, it's what I've always dreamed of. Oh, it sounds so exciting. I knew they'd come to me, Lily. Charles Lawton, Cedric Hardwick, and others have been touring, giving readings for months now. Lily, the people are crying for Shakespeare, for my talent. With a torch of culture in my hand, I will cross the country. You will double-cross the country. <laughs> now, stop kidding him. And tell the truth, Agnes. Don't you think Edwin will be wonderful giving those readings? I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that it may tend to incriminate me. Agnes, if you don't... Oh, I'll get the phone. Hello? Oh, yes, Dr. Wellington, he's here. You're down in our lobby. Well, please come right up. Was that Dr. T. Horatio Wellington? Yeah, yes, I forgot to tell you. He called earlier and said he was coming up. T. Horatio Wellington, my impresario. He said I was superb. He's going to book me coast to coast. Great days are in store for the country, Lily. Oh, wait till I hit those cities. Watch him run for those bomb shelters. <laughs> now, clear the table. Dr. Wellington will be here any minute. Now, here's your dressing gown, Edwin. Comb your beard. Uh, do I look all right? Wonderful. He'll be so impressed. Edwin. What's wrong? Well, what about your Uncle Goodhart radio program? If you go on your lecture oh, tour... Oh, Lily, what is a measly program compared to my grand tour? We'll just have to find another Uncle Goodhart. Edwin, you can't do that to the sponsor. Lily, we'll discuss that. Oh, Agnes, the door. Got it. 
Yes? Is it my pleasure to be about to set my foot into the most gracious home of Mr. Edwin Montague, Esquire? Well, show enough, Massa. Agnes. <laughs> Agnes, Agnes. I'll kill you for this, Agnes. Uh, Dr. Wellington, T. Horatio at your service, sir. Well, won't you sit down, sir? Oh, uh, Dr. Wellington, pardon my neglect, but this is my wife, Lily. Mrs. Montague. The graciousness and beauty of your face and the divineness of your form leads my mind to but one conclusion. You must be a daughter of the South. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, originally from Cleveland. Well, that's close enough to the Mason-Dixon line to suit me. <laughs> Cleveland, ladies, won't you come out tonight? Do <laughs> Pardon my enthusiasm, but just an old plantation song. <laughs> Have a chair, Doc. Who is this vision of loveliness? Why, she's, uh... You don't have to tell me, Mr. Montague. I recognize the family resemblance immediately. <laughs> Your lovely daughter. My daughter? His daughter, that's all I need. Where's the gas pipe? <laughs> Dr. Wellington, this is Agnes. She's our maid. This is the end of a perfect day. Uh, 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 doctor, I was quite interested in your wire. Uh, you mentioned something about, I believe, uh, a tour? I certainly did. Mr. Montague, it was my privilege to attend your magnificent performance last night. Well, thank you, thank you. It, it was just a little reading. Sir, as a man who has the greatest and utmost respect for the works of one William Shakespeare, popularly known as the Bard of Avon, and as a man whose business is seeking out the finest talent in this fair land of ours, I say without a qualm or equivocation that I never, and I repeat, I never did hear a voice possessing the strength and golden quality of yours, sir. Excuse me, but what part of Brooklyn did you say you were from? <laughs> I must be quiet. Uh, well, uh, Doctor, if I'd known you were in the audience, I would have prepared a more elaborate program. I would have perhaps included my famous reading of Anthony's oration at Caesar's funeral. Sir... Would it be too much for me to believe that you would do that for me now? Try and stop him. Agnes, dear, why don't you dig up one of your old bones and play with it? <laughs> Edwin, do Anthony's speech for Dr. Wellington. Oh, very well, very well. I'm a quiver. I'm simply a quiver. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. Beautiful, Edwin. Beautiful. Well, Doctor? <laughs> uh, doctor, you're crying. Excuse me. I never... I never thought I'd live to see the day when a human voice... A human voice could put to shame the songbirds of my beloved South. <laughs> Doctor, you're too kind. Please, sir, recite me some more, sir. Recite me some more. Well, I'd love to, Doctor. Uh, now, there's the battle scene from Macbeth. Edwin, you haven't time. You have to get to your broadcast. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Doctor, I'm a little rushed. And, and I'd like to hear more about the tour. The tour? Oh, yes. Well, T. Horatio Wellington, after 27 years of presenting artists to the American public is about to launch his most brilliant, stimulating, and phantasmagorical stellar presentation, The Magnificent Montague, in An Evening with Shakespeare. An Evening with Shakespeare. Oh, Edwin, your dream. Well, Mr. Montague, sir, is it going to be my pride and pleasure to present you to the culture-starved people across the length and breadth of this country I like to call the United States? <laughs> Dr. Wellington, let the tour begin. When will it start? Mrs. Montague, ma'am, I've been working on the arrangements of the tour all winter. We could open tonight. Tonight? Certainly. We could open in New Haven, only an hour from here. Lily, New Haven, the plays we've tried out in New Haven. Oh, Edwin, I'm so excited. Opening tonight. Then off we go, riding the waves of applause and bravos. Bridgeport. Boston, Portland, Maine, Montreal, Quebec, down through Buffalo, Toledo, Milwaukee. Oh, Doctor, you're making me dizzy. Well... They'll make the whole United States dizzy. I'll get my publicity out now. Edwin Montague is a coming your way. In an evening with Shakespeare. Presented by T. Horatio Wellington. Stop. 
starring Edwin Montague. I'll pick you up tonight at 6 o'clock, and we'll be off for New Haven. I'll be ready at 6. Excellent. Until then, sir, I am and ever remain your humble servant, T. Horatio Wellington. Au revoir, y'all. <laughs> starring Edwin Montague. Oh, Lily... At last, I could use my own name again. No more sneaking and hiding under the name of Uncle Goodhart. Hurry, Edwin, you'll be late for the broadcast. My last broadcast. <laughs> we'll be back with the magnificent Montague in just a moment. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Just imagine an hour and a half of comedy, music, and drama, the finest of each, with the greatest names in show business, presided over by Tallulah Bankhead. Well, that's The Big Show, brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday on NBC. All this and Tallulah, too. No wonder it's The Big Show. And for drama on Sunday, hear Theater Guild on the air. <laughs> And now, back to the magnificent Montague. With a great tour about to begin, Montague is finishing his Uncle Goodhart broadcast. Listen. And now, dear listeners, remember, always keep your head high into the sun and light. So ends another episode of Uncle Goodhart. Until he meets you again tomorrow in his little cottage on the sunny side of the lane, here is Uncle Goodhart with his thought for the day. When your neighbor grabs a wire that's live, like a neon sign starts looking, don't stand there while the sparks shoot out. Step up and ask, what's cooking? <laughs> Mr. Montague. Truer words were never spoken. Grand show. Here's our director, Mr. Zinza. Good show, wasn't it, Mr. Zinza? Ah, uh, with a humdinging lollapalooza, all right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Zinza. Uh, gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. You have just heard Uncle Goodhart's swan song. Huh? Your swan song? I didn't hear anyone singing. Quiet! Mr. Montague, what are you talking about? That was my last radio program. I'm going on a lecture tour. Oh, no! You can't just walk out on us like that. Going for a walk, Mr. Montague? <laughs> Quiet! Mr. Montague, this puts us into a terrible hole. Did he walk into a hole? <laughs> Zinza, will you get it through your thick skull? Mr. Montague is leaving the program. Oh, dear. Now, gentlemen, uh... Gentlemen, I'm sorry to give you such short notice, but my nationwide tour opens in New Haven tonight. Mr. Montague, you can't. Uncle Goodhart must go on. Think of the sponsor. Think of the listeners. Yes, with no Uncle Goodhart to listen to, what will ten million housewives do? Well, let them clean their houses for a change. <laughs> Mr. Montague, you've got to change your mind. Wait till the sponsor hears this. Boys, my mind is made up, and stop blubbering. Blubbering? Who's blubbering? Is someone blubbering? Zinzer, are you blubbering? Blubbering? Who's blubbering? I wasn't blubbering. Someone was blubbering. I wasn't blubbering. Stop I... this. Gentlemen, try and understand. I must follow my star. For years, I've been dedicated to one art. I thought I had been forgotten, but I was wrong. The people of our country want me. I must answer the call. Cheapers, he's been drafted. <laughs> ah, Mr. Zinzer, Mr. Zinzer. I shall think of you most of all. When I cross the desert and look out into the vast emptiness, I will think of your head. Oh, thank you, Mr. Monaghan. <laughs> Yay! When the sponsor hears of this... He'll have pups. Good. <laughs> He'll have pups, eh? Well, good. If they look like him, save one for me. I've always wanted an Airedale. <laughs> Mr. Montague, what you said. Did you hear what he said about the boss, Zinzer? Yes. <laughs> Zinzer, I'm going to report you. If that's how you feel about the sponsor, your bread and butter. Oh, I think he's a wonderful man. Fine, honest, true blue. Well, that's better. He can't help it if he looks like an Airedale. <laughs> Zinzer! Leave him alone, Springer. Boys, I have to get home and pack. Tonight, after all these years, I start living again. Tonight in New Haven, 
I'm having an evening with Shakespeare. Did he play canasta? <laughs> Mr. Montague, how can we possibly find another Uncle Goodhart by tomorrow afternoon? Here we go, combing the Bowery again. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, that's your problem, and now comes one of the happiest moments of our life. I say goodbye to radio. Goodbye, Mr. Springer. Mr. Montague. Goodbye, Zinza. Good luck, Mr. Montague. Remember what Uncle Goodhart says. Keep your head high into the sun and life. <laughs> thank you, Zinza, thank you. And remember, gentlemen, if you can get up to New Haven tonight, you will see the triumphant return of the magnificent Montague. <laughs> Help me close this trunk, then we can start packing the other one. We sure cleaned out the closets. Did you get a load of those old costumes he hasn't worn in eight years? Well, let's pack them. He wants to take them along. Who has to pack them? Let's just tell the moths where they're going, they can fly them there. <laughs> Agnes, stop kidding around. Dr. Wellington is picking him up at five. Agnes, I just thought of something. What? Edwin will be gone for months. I know. I keep pinching myself to see if it's true. <laughs> Don't fool yourself, Agnes. You're going to miss him. Like Brooklyn misses the Giants. <laughs> Edwin and I have never been separated very long. For all these years, it's going to be strange not having Edwin in the house. So what? We'll buy a dog who howls all day. You won't know he's gone. <laughs> oh, I hope not. I'll get the door. Hello, Agnes. Well, here he is, traveling Sam the Shakespeare man. <laughs> well, Lily, am I packed? Uh, almost, Edwin. Uh, did you pack my throat atomizer? E Edwin, in your entire career, you've never had trouble with your voice. What could hurt that moose call? <laughs> Talking about voices, Lily, uh, will you throw Agnes a fish and make her shut up? Edwin, you never use the atomizer. But I'll be traveling. The dust from the trains. Every night of performance. My voice, Lily, my the voice. The dust? If there's any dust, that mouth is big enough to let in a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Lily, so this is my goodbye. Lucky Luciano got a more tender farewell when he was deported. <laughs> oh, Edwin, I can't wait to hear you tonight. Agnes and I are going up to New Haven with Jarvis. Poor old Jarvis. How he must envy me. What he'd give to go on a Shakespearean tour. Edwin, I made those calls for you. It'll be in all the newspapers. Some of the critics are even going up to New Haven to see you. They always loved me in New Haven. Dr. Wellington hasn't given me the details, but I imagine we'll open at the Schubert Theater. Oh, that must be Jarvis. I'll get the door. It's Mr. Jarvis. Montague. Montague. Jarvis. Off you go, gallant eagle, carrying the torch of our beloved Shakespeare to the hinterlands. Aye, let the trumpets blare, let the drums roll. Montague, the noblest Roman of them all, rides forth, rides forth to scatter the seeds of culture to every hamlet and village like the spring winds. The wind of learning, the wind of art, the wind of wisdom, the wind of the... Uh... He's out of wind. <laughs> All right, Agnes. Down, girl. Down. Well, Jarvis, what are they saying about my tour around the theatrical club? Montague, every Shakespearean actor's green with envy. But you, Montague, the greatest actor of them all, have been chosen. Oh, now, uh, thank you, Jarvis. He couldn't have put it better himself. Mm. Edwin, you'd better hurry. Dr. Wellington should be here any moment to pick you up. Dr. Wellington? Uh, he, he's the man who's arranged the tour? I just met the man this morning, and this modern dynamo has already arranged a tour of 40 cities. I Jarvis, theaters across the country that have been dark for years once again will ring with the immortal words of the bar. You're all packed, Edwin. I wonder what's keeping you. Uh, that's Dr. Wellington, Agnes. I got it. Come in, Doc. Uh, Dr. Wellington? Mr. Montague, the time has come for the great adventure to begin. And I thank the heavens above that I have been fortunate enough to hitch my wagon to a star of such magnificent magnitude, sir, as you, sir. Some wagon, the Surrey with a fringe on his chin. <laughs> Lily, won't you change your mind about coming along on the tour? We can board Agnes at a kennel. You'd better go, Edwin. We're off to success. We're riding down the glory road. <laughs> Goodbye, Edwin. Jarvis and I will catch a seven o'clock train and see you in New Haven. Wait, now wait. If you don't mind, Dr. Wellington, uh, perhaps Lily and Mr. Jarvis uh, can go up there with us. Well, uh, now, I certainly would enjoy the company of such a lovely and gracious woman, but uh, I'm afraid certain problems present themselves. Namely, there just ain't that much room on the truck. Well, Lily, maybe... Uh, uh... Excuse me, Doctor, did you say truck? Yes. 
My truck. I got a double parked outside. That's what we're traveling in. A truck? But, Doctor, stars don't travel by truck. My stars do. Been doing it for 27 years. I trust, sir, uh, you drive. Drive? But, Doctor, how will it look for the star to drive up to the theater in a truck? Theater? I don't quite follow you, sir. The theater where I'm going to perform. What theater? We just back the truck onto an empty lot, lower the tailboard, and the performance begins. Oh! <laughs> oh! Shakespeare from the back of a truck. Well, you're being well paid for it. You're getting three cents on the bottle. Bottle? <laughs> yes, bottle. Three cents for every bottle of Dr. Wellington's magic elixir on youth rejuvenator. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no a medicine show. You open the show in an Indian costume to attract the yokels. I trust you all can beat a drum. Get out of here. Well, the critics are on their way to New Haven. I'm ruined. Sir, you can't back out. I'll save the best spot in the show for you. You're right between the fire eater and the shimmy dancer. Get out of here. Unhand me, sir. Unhand me. Get out. Lily. Lily, what I almost stepped into. (laughs) I I guess we can cancel our trip to New Haven, huh, Jarvis? Jarvis? Wait a minute, where's Jarvis? He was just here. Hey, come here. Look out the window. What is it? Look down at this tree. God, look at that truck. Tucked to T. Horatio Wellington traveling shows. From Shakespeare to Shimmy. Oh. Oh. Well, what is it, Edwin? Lily. <laughs> All's well that ends well. Ends well? Yes. The spirit of Shakespeare will still cover the land. Edwin, what are you talking about? Lily, look. Jarvis just got into the truck. Join us again next Friday at the same time for another transcribed visit with a magnificent Montague starring Marty Woolley, created and directed by Nat Hyken, written by Nat Hyken and Billy Friedberg. Anne Seymour was Lily, Pert Kelton was Agnes. Also heard on tonight's program were Art Carney as Dr. T. Horatio Wellington, Johnny Gibson as Zinzer, Gavin Gordon as Jarvis, and John Griggs as Springer. Jack Ward was at the organ. This is Don Pardo saying, stay tuned for Duffy's Tavern, which follows immediately. (laughs) Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Saturday chimes mean a big evening of fun and music as Red Foley brings you Grand Ole Opry from Nashville with Minnie Pearl, Rod Brassfield, and famous guest stars. Tomorrow also means an hour of fun with the Dennis Day Show, featuring songs and comedy by Dennis, and the Judy Canova Show, bringing you mountain-style music and mayhem. (laughs) 